Hi, I'm Maddie from Quilt Smart, smiling through my face mask at you. And this is one of our new things that we are doing for the face mask. Our local um, hospital had a challenge to make 10,000 masks and the pleats were kind of hard. So we decided, well, if you print the pleats, it might be a little bit easier to make. So that's what we've done. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So you're gonna get a good look at that. There's a nose line on it for a nose piece to go in there to squeeze around your nose. And there's pleat lines and hem lines and seam lines. It just makes it super easy. Okay, so what you're gonna do first is cut out your pattern. Now on the pattern, you can cut between the solid lines um, for this style, cause there's a couple different variations you can do. For the style we're showing today, you can cut right on the um, solid line there. And I like to cut between these pieces I like a little more room at the bottom and I've checked with the local hospital and they're absolutely fine with that. It's just a little easier than making a narrow hem that narrow. Just put a little hem in the bottom and the reason I like a little extra there is even though we were the ones that printed it, I still think it's kind of narrow. And that's what was on the original pattern for the um, hospital. But they're okay with it being a little thicker too. We've checked with them since. So what I'm gonna do here is just start on a little tiny piece of bias tape which we call the leader. And that way you can just keep sewing and it doesn't get caught into your, so you can just keep sewing. Otherwise it kind of gets pulled down sometimes. So I'm just folding this over. Whoops, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is the lining, it's on the inside of the bag. I mean, of the face mask. We have a lot of bag patterns too. And then I go right from there into the next piece. So I'm putting that a little narrow fold there too. And just keep going. And that kind of folds nicely in there. You could give it a little finger press. Okay. All right, so now I'm putting the printed piece here, wrong side of the printed piece to the right side of the fabric, and the hems are both at the same side. That's a little important. Um, and it's even with this. And the reason for this is that we're gonna now make the pleats. And you just fold on the line there and fold to the next line. And there's little arrows that show you how to do which way to go. So that makes it easy. And then we just fold 3A to 3B, just like we did before. Fold down. And give it some steam. And then when you take these apart, you've got your pleats and you just fold that right back like that and you fold this right back like that. So your pleats are already in there. This is what makes it so fabulous. And then you put right sides together and this says right side right on it, okay? So then you put the right sides together and then we're gonna stitch. Typically this line will show through. Um, if it doesn't, you can stitch a quarter of an inch. So then we're going to stitch across there and I think I'll start with the leader again. And just stitch all along the line for a quarter of an inch. Um, I don't back stitch, but I do use a 2.0 stitch. Okay, so now we're just gonna take this and clip off our things here. And we're gonna take this and press that seam open. And I usually do it this way um, because I don't wanna unpress the pleats that I went in there. And a little iron is good. If you don't have a little iron like this, you can just use your fingers too. And then you fold it this way. And I usually give that a little press, also not bothering with the pleats. Okay, and 
you can replete it, or at this point in time, you can simply stitch on this line. That's the nose piece line. So we're gonna stitch on that. I start in a little bit, and then I go backwards. Okay, I don't know why my machine's not going backwards, but um, we'll worry about that later. <laughs> okay, and you come around, and on this, you can see that there's a space there. So you stitch up to that space, and then go backwards a little bit. Um, okay, and then you skip that space. I call it a jump stitch. I'm not sure if other people call it that or not. But you let that not be stitched, that part. And you back stitch. There we go. Okay. And this is where you are going to put the little piece for the nose. Now, there's all kinds of little pieces that you can put in there, like wires. Um, there's some little metal pieces. I used an old earring that I had lost a piece of. <laughs> So there's lots of things you can put in there, and some people like them and some don't. Um, as far as, you know, if you're making them for the hospital, I think that that needs to go in there. But they may have their own pieces too. And I would definitely suggest that if you're making these for, your, for the hospitals, of your local hospital, that you do um, check with them first for what their needs are. Okay, so now all the pleats are nice. They go down, which is the way they're supposed to go. I'd give it another press. Okay, and I like it when this comes up just a hair from the bottom because that way it won't show. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's not like your underwear showing, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's not a bad thing. Okay, now you could base this if you want. Um, you could also just put the, I'll show you, you could base it right on the line. Um, that's the line that you're gonna sew on. I kind of like to do that because that way you have your um, you have your pleats uh, basted and it's um, you know a little nicer than having them open still. So I do that, and now we're just going to put the tape on. So that was pretty easy so far, I think. Um, so the way that you put your tape on now, I have just bias tape here, and so. I have the extra wide double fold bias tape, which is becoming hard to get. Um, you can also do it from a piece of muslin. Um, that's this one, is a piece of muslin. And when you make your own strap, like with the clover, the little um, bias maker, here's another one that is made with the same fabric. Um, this is cute, I think, a little bunny one. And I use also, popular out there is to use shoestrings. Um, this one's a little different because you have to put the shoestrings in and create a seam. And that'll be a different variation that we do on another video. And on bias tape, it comes, I don't know if you can see that because this is black. This bottom one is just a hair over so that you can see it. So you want the narrower one up. And then you, what happens there is you know that you've got it all caught. There you go. So we're just going to put that halfway between here. And I just eyeball that. I don't measure it. And then these are really great for the little clips to hold those in place. And now you're just going to take this and stitch from the other end. So you just stitch from here. You can back stitch. You can put a little knot if you want there. I don't pay too much attention to what color thread I use. I mean, it's nice to kind of coordinate, but if you're making dozens of these, you're gonna probably wanna maybe have like all the same straps or, um, which, oh, by the way, um, seven eighths inch twill, twill tape works really nice for this too. So there's a lot of different options out there. You might need to get a little creative because they're being bought up pretty carefully. All right, as soon as you get on the mask, I would backstitch just a hair for um, security at the corner. And then you can remove your clip and just keep going. And then you do the same thing to the bottom as you did to the top.
you're a newbie and you're worried about stitches being straight, then I'd recommend using the same color as the tape. And you just keep stitching. Okay, so I have my this strap on, or tie, and you just put the other one on in exactly the same way with the, with the little clip in the middle and stitch it. So one thing I wanna show you is about the end. Um, I started a little bit in the end, so kind of this was sort of like my leader. And if you do that, you can, especially with this kind of clip, just clip it off for the ending of it. That's pretty easy. And um, if you have something that ravels a lot, you could use fray check on it. Um, you could put a little tiny knot in it if you wanted to. Um, so there's all kinds of options out there. You could get pretty creative with that. And um, I also did, here's a couple that I did. Um, here's one that I did where I didn't sew it yet, but I did. I used my embroidery machine to um, embroider some little flowers on that. So I was pretty excited about that and doing more embroidery. Um, maybe even some nice messages, like we're all in this together. So you stay safe. Love you all. Let us know if you have any questions at all. We're trying to get face masks made and the pattern out there and the instructions as quickly as we possibly can. And we just so appreciate all of our wonderful customers and what you're doing to help the world. Thanks so much and I'll see you on the next video.